Hi there Santiago students. Today I have here Emmanuel's Dream, the true story of Emmanuel Ofosu Yeboah. And this is written by Lori Ann Thompson and Sean Quells. And here I'll show you, it says here, one person can change the world. And right now we have a lot of stories of different heroes and I think Emmanuel is kind of a hero as well. <clears throat> Emmanuel's dream. And this takes place in Ghana, which is a country in Africa. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he would be useless or worse, a curse. His father left never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and she named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back two miles each way on one leg by himself. At first, nobody would play with him. So Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it, if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches that his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot, Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Goodwin pushed him faster, so fast, so that he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell hard, but finally, Emmanuel rode. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market, and Emmanuel's sisters and brothers were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like the other disabled people. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted. Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, Be respectful. Take care of your family. Don't ever beg and don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, no one would help. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana 
seemed impossible. Then Emmanuel wrote to the Challenged Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike and a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. Then he went door to door asking for additional support. And finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. And then Emmanuel tied his right, legs to the bright, right, tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his left foot into a flip-flop attached to the pedal, and rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through rainforests, over rolling hills, across wide, muddy rivers. He pedaled past Odom forests and plantain farms, and through the market city of Kumasi. He pedaled as trucks roared past on the narrow highways, and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamal. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the country of his, the proudly wearing the colors of its flag on a shirt printed with the word the pozo or the disabled person along the way emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without he talked to poor farmers and wealthy landowners to religious leaders government officials and reporters he wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The farther Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered, able-bodied able adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and came outside, some for the very first time. The young man, once thought of as a curse, was becoming a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things and one person is enough to change the world. And his quote, in this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. The end.